Here we'll discuss systems of equations. So this is an example of an equation, a linear equation. a1x1 plus a2x2 all the way up to anxn equal to b. Like I said, these are linear equations. And in particular, the main properties are that all of the a's, a1 through an, and the b term are going to be real numbers. and x1 through xn will be variables. So here are, are a few examples and non-examples. So my first equation, 5x1 plus 9x2 minus 7x3 plus 8x4 equal to negative 3, this is a linear equation in four variables. My second one, 9x1 plus 3x3 equal to negative 9. This is a linear equation in three variables. Even though we only see two of them, we have a plus 0x2 term in there. This third one is not an example, in particular because of this x1 cubed. We don't want any of the x's to raise to any powers. The fourth one, in particular is not linear because of this x1, x2. We don't want to multiply any of the variables. And then the last one has this sign of x1, which is bad. We don't want a variable inside of a function. When we're looking at a system of equations, this is just a set of several equations. So in this particular example, we have a set of a set of m equations in n variables. So these two numbers do not necessarily need to be the same. The main thing is it's just a set of linear equations that we're going to be solving all at once. And here's an example. This one is three equations in three variables. In this case, the number of variables and equations is the same, but once again, it's not required for it to be the same. So the idea is we want to find the solutions of these linear equ uh, systems of equations. So these solutions look like these n-tuples, just an ordered set of n numbers such that when xi is equal to si, each equation is a true statement. So the idea is we're going to take each one of these substitute the first one in for x1, the second one for x2, etc., and see if every equation is true. The set of all solutions is called the solution set. So we'll do this example. Is 1, 4, 2 a solution to this system of equations? Well, we find this out by taking each equation individually and substituting in. So let's start with the first one. I have a 1 for x1 plus 2. x2 would be a 4 minus 5. x3 is 2. This is 1 plus 8 minus 10, which is negative 1. So that one is valid. My second equation had an x1 minus 4x3. So this is 1 minus 8, which is negative 7. So the second equation is valid. My third equation has an x1 plus 6x2 minus 8x3. This is 1 plus 24 minus 16, 
which is 9. So all three are valid. Is this a solution? Yes, since we substituted it in and all three equations gave a true statement. One more. Is negative 3, 2, negative 1 a solution of this? Well, if we start with the first equation, x1 is negative 3, x2 is 2, and x3 is negative 1. This would be negative 3 plus 4 plus 5, which is 6. So that gave us a true statement. If I try the second one, negative 2x1 plus 3x2 plus 6x3. This would be 6 plus 6 minus 6, which is positive 6. So this one is not true. So this is not a solution. We don't need to check the third equation. As soon as we find a single equation that does not result in a true statement, then the answer is no. The next question we're going to look at is how many possible solutions could we have to a system of equations? And in order to do that, we're going to think of some of the smallest systems of equations, a set of two equations in two variables. And these can actually be graphed as lines. So it's important to think about how it's possible to graph two lines. The first way would be for the lines to intersect once. In this case, there would be one solution. So that is the possibility. The lines could also be parallel. In this case, they never intersect. So there's no solution. The third case, would be if we graph them and they're actually the same line. In this case, there are infinite solutions because they intersect infinitely many times. They intersect at every single point on the line. So these are the only three ways to draw two different lines. And it actually works out that this is the only three possible solutions for linear systems. Not only in two variables, but in general. You can either have one solution, no solution, or infinitely many. A couple of definitions. Consistent means we have at least one solution. So either one or infinitely many. Inconsistent would be no solutions. A couple more. Independent would be at most one solution. So zero or one. And dependent would be infinite solutions. So now that we have this, we can look at our three possibilities. The first option was one solution. This system is consistent. And independent. No solution. Is inconsistent. And independent. And infinite solutions would be consistent and dependent. So the only case we didn't look at here is inconsistent and dependent. Inconsistent would mean I have no solution, and dependent would mean I have infinite solutions, so that case just isn't possible.